Location, the marshes of South Louisiana. Assignment, use a wire line unit to pull and replace a malfunctioning gas lift valve. The valve's installed in a well that's on continuous flow gas lift. In continuous flow gas lift, gas is usually injected down the annulus. The gas enters the tubing through an open gas lift valve. The injected gas lowers the bottom hole tubing pressure and allows the well to flow. Gas lift valves are pressure sensitive. They open and close depending on the pressure in the annulus and in the tubing. In the well, injected gas forces liquid down the annulus through all of the open valves and up the tubing to the surface. Then the gas enters the top valve, goes into the tubing, and lifts liquid in the tubing to the surface. Liquid in the annulus continues to enter the tubing through the open lower valves. Gas continues on down the annulus to the second valve, enters the tubing, and unloads additional liquid. At this point, the top valve closes. Continued gas injection moves liquid in the annulus down to lower valves and further unloads the tubing. As lower valves remain open, upper ones close. Eventually, gas enters the bottom valve and all the other valves are closed. The gas lowers the weight of the liquid column. Lower liquid column weight means lower bottom hole pressure. So, reservoir fluids can flow. The well is once again a producer. However, if an upper valve sticks open, gas can't get to a lower valve. So production ceases or drops because bottom hole pressure is not lowered to the amount it should be. The result? You have to pull the valve, repair or replace it, and run it back into the well. Now in general, you have two ways to pull and run gas lift valves. It depends on how the valves are installed in the well. Now this valve is on a conventional mandrel in the tubing strain. The valve's mounted on the outside of the mandrel. To replace this valve, you have to pull the tubing string, replace the valve, then run the valve and tubing back into the well. Now on the other hand, this is a side pocket mandrel. The valve's installed in a pocket that's an integral part of the mandrel. Now to replace this valve, you can use a wire line unit. The tubing is left in place. Advantage, it's less expensive to replace a bad valve. And the reason is you don't have to pull the tubing string. To pull a valve with wire line, you use a wire line assembly that's run down the tubing. The assembly includes the line, the rope socket used to attach tools to the line, and a weight bar that activates wire line jars. Now the jars help in removing and replacing the valve in the side pocket. The assembly also includes a knuckle joint that helps get the assembly past any obstacles in the tubing and a pulling tool on a kickover tool. The pulling tool attaches to the valve and pulls it. 
The kickover tool pivots over the valve in the side pocket. Now to run this assembly into the well, you usually run it through a lubricator assembly. Many different types are available, but all of them allow the wireline assembly to be run into the well without opening the well to atmospheric pressure. During wireline operations, the lubricator acts as a pressure vessel, so it should be regularly tested and inspected. Okay, to install the lubricator, first close the crown valve on the Christmas tree. Then thread the wire line and wire line assembly through the lubricator and mount the entire assembly onto the tree. A stuffing box or other similar pressure tight device seals around the top of the wire line yet allows it to travel into or out of the well. Now tighten that packing in the stuffing box so that just a small amount of grease oozes out. The line can then move up and down without well pressure being lost. Now also, you might need one or more wireline blowout preventers to prevent or control blowouts. The BOP gives more protection against well pressure than the stuffing box alone, and it may be needed in high pressure situations. So, with the lubricator in place, let's watch a crew replace a bad valve. First, using a depth gauge, the wireline operator lowers the assembly to a point just below the malfunctioning valve. Next, he raises the wireline assembly to a point just above the valve to orient the assembly. All right, to explain, mandrels and kickover tools are built both with and without orienting devices. This one has an orienting device. In this type, a special key on the kickover tool correctly positions the kickover tool in the mandrel. Here's how. As the operator slowly raises the assembly, the key engages an orienting sleeve in the mandrel. The spiral-shaped sleeve causes the key on the kickover tool to rotate as it's raised. A little more upward movement and the kickover tool rotates until the key enters a slot in the sleeve. When the key reaches the top of the slot, the key and tool are properly aligned in the mandrel. Now when this happens, the operator will notice a change on the weight indicator. And when he does, he gives another upward pull on the line and the kickover tool pivots directly over the valve. Then the operator slacks off on the wire line. Slacking off causes the jars in the wire line assembly to jar downward. The downward blow frees the valve latching assembly and causes the pulling tool to firmly latch onto the gas lift valve. The operator then pulls the entire assembly and valve out of the well. And at the surface, the crew puts a new valve on the wireline assembly. To run the new valve, the crew uses a running tool with the kickover tool. The running tool is attached to the valve with brass pins. Use only brass. Steel pins are too strong, as you'll see in a moment. With the new or repaired valve made up in the assembly, the crew lowers it into the well until the valve is just below the side pocket mandrel. Then the operator picks up on the line to raise the key on the kickover tool into the orienting sleeve. At that point, the operator pulls up further on the line to pivot the kickover tool and position the valve over the side pocket. Then he jars down on the wire line to drive the valve into the pocket. A latch on the valve engages a shoulder on the mandrel that holds the valve firmly in place. With the valve in place, the operator jars up on the line. 
The upward jarring shears the brass pins in the running tool to release the assembly from the valve. Now here's where the steel pins would be too strong to shear. Once the pins are sheared, the assembly is pulled to the surface. With the assembly out of the way, let's look closer at the installed valve. The mandrel has smooth bores so that packing on the valve forms a pressure tight seal between the valve and the mandrel. A pressure tight seal is needed to prevent leaks around the valve. Gas should enter only through ports in the valve and exit only through the top, or in this case, bottom of the valve. This way, gas injection is carefully controlled through the valve. Now let's review what we've seen. First, in continuous flow gas lift, gas is usually injected down the annulus. The gas enters the tubing through an open gas lift valve. The injected gas lowers the bottom hole tubing pressure and allows the well to flow. This gas lift valve is mounted in a side pocket mandrel. You can retrieve this valve with wire line and usually save money by not having to pull the tubing string. A wire line assembly includes the line, the rope socket used to attach tools to the line, and a weight bar to activate wire line jars. The jars help to remove and replace the valve in the side pocket. The assembly also includes a knuckle joint that helps get the assembly past any obstacles in the tubing. A kickover tool and attached pulling tool completes the assembly. The pulling tool attaches to the valve and pulls it. The wireline assembly is lowered into the well through a lubricator. A lubricator allows the wireline to be run without opening the well to atmospheric pressure. A stuffing box or other device makes a pressure tight seal around the wire line, yet allows it to travel in and out of the well. Also, a wireline BOP may be needed to prevent or control blowouts. In any case, with the lubricator in place, the operator lowers the wireline assembly to a point just below the bad valve. Then he raises the assembly to engage the key on the kickover tool in the orienting sleeve. Now this aligns the kickover tool over the valve. The wireline assembly is picked up and the kickover tool pivots over the valve. Then the kickover tool and attached pulling tool are jarred downward to engage the valve. And finally, the wireline assembly and attached valve are pulled from the well. The new valve is made up on a running tool that is attached to the kickover tool. Brass shear pins are used to attach the running tool to the kickover tool. Then, the assembly is lowered until the valve is just below the side pocket. Picking up on the assembly, orients the kickover tool, the pulling tool, and the valve over the side pocket and causes the kickover tool to pivot. Jarring down drives the valve firmly into the pocket. And finally, upward jarring shears the brass pins in the running tool and releases the assembly from the valve. If you have workbooks, work the exercise.